to God. What a day. You are very welcome to season seven, phase seven, day three, and a grand and glorious celebration of the 200th episode of your love world specials with our man of God, Pastor Chris. Would you give the Lord a shout of praise? Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. You know what? It's time to get everybody seated, everybody connected. Let them know this is a very special one, a very, very special episode. Get your friends, get your family connected. We are live on all the Love One networks. We are live on uh, CFLIX app. We are live on our ministry website and all our ministry platforms. Today is a glorious celebration. And I want to say thank you so specially to my pastor, to my man of God for the privilege of opening this 200th episode and also for the blessing of leading our global congregation in prayers. Pastor, thank you so much for your, 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 your love and all that you have taught us, really bringing out for us the revelations of the Spirit in a timely way. What we needed to hear at every time, every point in time of this journey, we got it. As we listened to you, we were prospered. As we listened to you, we were helped. As we listened to you, we were taken out of the situation and circumstance around us, and we found ourselves walking in victory. Yes, we prevailed. And Pastor Sir, you led us in prayers. We prayed, and the the Lord answered our prayers. We have our testimonies. Glory to God. For these 200 episodes through these three years, it's been a victory parade from one victory, one testimony to the next. We're so grateful to God. Where you are, can you just lift up your hands and give thanks to the Lord for our joy. Today is a day of joy. Today is a day of celebration. Today is a day of praise to the living God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Now we're going to begin today as we have been doing with a time of prayers. Yes, we're going to begin with a time of prayers and we're going to start with a prayer point that our man of God gave to us today on the Pastor Chris Live Prayer Network. The Pastor Chris Live Prayer Network is the largest prayer network in all of human history. And we have been praying nonstop, second for second, from January 2020, with amazing testimonies accompanying our prayers. And you can follow the Pastor Chris Life Prayer Network on King's Chat. If you would download the King's Chat super user from the Love World App Store, and when you download the app, follow the Pastor Chris Live super user, and you'll be connected to daily prayer points prophetic words of the Spirit, and you'll find yourself living on top continually. And every Monday and Wednesday and Friday, the man of God, Pastor Chris, sends us prayer points, prayer posts, and we pray accordingly. And I would like to read the prayer post for today. Yes, we got one for today. And a man of God gave us a scripture, Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14. It says here, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Glory to God. Yes, that's what we're seeing today. And we're going to be praying earnestly in tongues of the Spirit. We're going to be interceding for the nations of the world and proclaiming these verses of Scripture. The Word of God delivers rema for us to use in our fight of faith, in our spiritual warfare. And this is beyond the written pages. This is now our testimony. This is now our proclamation. These are words for warfare in today's world. So I'd like you to just take a praying position. If you like to stand, you can, but whatever position is convenient for you to be reverent and prayerful and give attention to the prayers that we're praying now, please take that position. And we're going to declare in line with Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So go ahead and pray in other tongues and speak those words of the Spirit over our world today. Oh, baliga son taraba sheke sante, linda koza brante koba sheke basanta la bazeta, riba shabranta koma seka basante kole basata, reba shabrata kosante kileshte. 
Ninta koba zebranta, rakashe blaka sonta korama sheke basante. Ninta koma zebranda korama sheke basanta. Lega zabrada koraba sheke basonta la bajeke basate. Ninta korama shda karaba shonta koma sheke basanta. Librata koraba sheke lebonta koma sate. Librada koraba sheke bosta kala kasante. Ninta korama sheke banto karama sheke lebrasi. Ibranda korama sheke libaso. Ki bashota kana, linga zobra de kore bashi ke basante li bashata, re basabrate kule baso kara bashata, rita kola baseta li bashenta kuma sate. Yes, the earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Yes, like the waters cover the sea, laga basata, libra da kosa brenta kuma shate, libra da kora mashi ke basante li basata, raka shibra de kosa brate koshate, linta kora mashi. Bonta kora masha, le branta kora masha ke basante li basate, le brada kora masha ke basonta kara masto, le branta kuma sete, li basata kora masto kara mashota, ora kaba shota kora masto kaba shota, le brada kora masto kaba shote kuma sate, le branta kora masha kara masho kaba sota, le brada kora masho kaba sote kama shete, li basata kora Yes, Lord, your glory is born in all the earth. Your glory is seen in all the earth. The glory of your word is seen in all the earth. The glory of your spirit is seen in all the earth. The glory of your grace is seen in all the earth. The glory of your testimonies, they are revealed in all the earth. The glory of your presence is manifested all over the earth. Yes, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord fills the earth as the waters cover the sea. So it is written, and as it's God's will, so it is done in our world. By the word of faith of God's children, we declare that the glory of God proliferates to the ends of the earth. <laughs> Lord, we honor you. We give you praise and glory and thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are still praying. And we're going to be reading from 1 Timothy chapter 2, from verses 1 to 4. Such potent words of the Spirit that are man of God, unwrapped for us as our, for our present use in our world today. This scripture has become, so, it, it means so much to us now because pastor showed us the importance of praying in this way. So I'll read from verses 1 to verse, verse, for, for, from verse 1 to verse 4. I exhort therefore that first of all, as a priority, supplications, prayers, 
intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. And we have been praying this way, praying for the nations as our man of God has taught us. So you're going to pray fervently in tongues of the Spirit in line with this scripture and pray specially for the nation where you live or where you work. It's so important you pray this way for the nation that you, where you live or where you work that the gospel will have free course in your nation and that the will of God will be done as it is in heaven. And therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, proclaim the Father's will. Decree God's righteousness on your nation as revealed in his word and in his spirit. God's righteousness is for the gospel to get to every man, for every man to be saved. His righteousness is that everybody enjoy the blessings of the gospel. His righteousness is that truth and justice prevail all over the earth. We're going to pray in line with this scripture. Pray for your nation, the nation you live or where you work. Go ahead and pray now. Libranta <laughs> Nebranda kora mashta kala bashonta riba likrote kiba shate koba shata liga zaprata koba sheke le bazonda kora mashta kile bazonda kara mashata le branda kora mashte kile basota raba likrote koba sheke basonda raba shate le branda kora mashte kile basonda raba likrote koba shete toba lisate raka she blante koba sonda raba la branda kora mashta Mashta kala bashonta riba shate, li branda kora mashe ke basanta abazete, li basota li shoka senta kara bashota, la branda kora mashe kile basota, raba she kali sonte kuba she farista, ne branda kora mashta kala bashonta, raka la basota riba she ke, li kaba sonta la bashanta kara mashata, le branda kora masho kara basho kaba sonte, le ta kora mashta kala bashonta kara mash. Le brada kora bashe ke basun tala bashate. Le branta kora mash da kala bashun te kore bashote. Le branta kora mash da kaba shota. Ola kase madi santo kari shaka. Le gaza branta kisante kole bashote. Ora kase ke sali boshte. Nita kuma shate. Raba sho branta kora mashte. Le bazo branta kora bashe ke basun ta. Le brada kora mash do kala basun ta. Le branda kora basho kara basho te. Le branda kora basho ke basun tali basho te. Liga sa branda kuma she ke basante. Le branda kora masho ke basun te. Le branda kora masho ke basun tali basho ta. Riba sa branda kora basho. Liba so branda kuma she ke basante li. Liga sa branda ko shate. Le branda kora basho kara basho ta. Raka basho ta kala basun tali basho te. Libranta kora mashte kile bashota, lubranta kora masha kali gonte kiba sata, reba shabrata kuma shante kiba sate, liba zobranda kuma jeke basota, ola kasa brate jaka sete, leba zobranta kora mashto kara bashota, leba zebrata kora mashto kara bashote, o masheke sante kile baze, liba zenda kuzante kima shata, raka sheke basto kaba shonte. Libranda kora masho kara mashota, ola kasente ki mazanta. Liba zaprade, osha kali basto kaba shanta, raka la baso tali shete. Lita kora masto kara mashota, raba sho branta kora masho kara mashota. Libranta kora masho kaba shonte liba shate. Libranta kora masha kara masho ke basota. Liba so bali shaka sante kole basota. Libranta kora masho. Le branda kora mash lo kara mash lo ta. Le branda kora mash 
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being your children, of being your saints to execute your will on the earth. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your word that shows us your truth and shows us your will. And thank you for giving us the name of Jesus Christ with which we enforce your will. And Father, we declare that the leaders of nations and the men in all nations, they are hearing the gospel. Yes, according to your will that all men should be saved, we declare salvation for all men is readily available. They hear the gospel. They receive the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we declare that truth prevails in our world. Truth and righteousness proliferate to the ends of the earth. Yes, your truth is evident. Your truth is manifest. Your truth is seen. Your truth is acknowledged. And your truth is received. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, because truth and justice reign in this world. Thank you, Lord, because men everywhere experience the goodness of the Lord. The goodness of your the world that you have made. And we declare that anyone that rises against that will is taken out of the way. We declare justice in the king's palaces. We declare justice in our courts. We declare justice in the parliament. Justice in the president's office. Justice everywhere. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the work of the spirit in our day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to be praying now for a harvest of souls. Oh, yes. <laughs> into the churches of Christ around the world. A mighty harvest of souls. We'll read from John chapter 4 and verse 35. John chapter 4 and verse 35. The gospel, all right. It says, Say not ye, they are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. Yes, it's time to look on the fields. It says, for they are white, all ready to harvest. Glory to God. Already is time for a harvest. And you know, as we pray, not only are laborers thrust out into the harvest field, but it is a great harvest. More laborers are being thrust out, and the harvest is great, and the churches of Christ are receiving this harvest. It is the year of the prolific church. The harvest is great. The laborers are many, and the glory of God is seen all over the earth. Let us pray now for a harvest of souls in all nations, no nation left out, in North Korea, glory to God, in Saudi Arabia, in Iran, in Iraq, all over the world, in the Maldives, everywhere, there is a harvest of souls in every nation, and call those nations by name. The harvest is in that nation, praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and pray. Lembraga se brate corebaste kilebasunta, raka sheke basto kale. 
Le Bonta Cora Bashe Kisanteli, Libran de Cosa Brade Coba Shatele Gusta, Nebranta Cora Bashta, Rakashe Casenta Cola Masota, Libranta Cora Bashta Carabashota, Rabasho Brata Cora Bashto Calabasota Ribashate, Libranta Cora Masse Kibosa Cora Masta, Libranta Cora Masse Kilebasota, Libranta Cora Masta Care, Libranta Cora Bashe Kibasota Rabashate. Libra <laughs> Lebranda cora mash da carabashota cabashate. Lebranda cora mash da calabashota kibasate. Lebranda cora mash da kibasota libashate. Lebranda cora mash da caribashota. Legasate carish da conta kibasote. Lebranda cora mash da kibasota. Rabasha grata cora mash da calabashate. Lebranda cora mash da kibasota. Legabase brate kashete. Sunta koma je karisto karista karista leta kura mashlo karabashota raba shabra se kole bosh lika karista kota kima sante li bashate libranda kura mashlo karabashota libranda kura mashlo kima sante libranda kuri mashlo kima sante libarista kuma shante kuma shante libranda kura mashlo kima sota raba shabra ta kura mash libarosta kura mash kima sante. Lebranda kura mash da kara bashote, Lebranda kura mash de ki bashote, Lita kura mash de ki bashote, Liga zapari shote, Lebranda kura mash da kaba, Raka bashota kura mash de ki bashota, Raba shabra de kule mash de ki bashote, Lita kura mash de kali shote kule bashota, Raba shabra ta kura mash, Lebari ta kota kula mash de ki bashote, Lebranda kura mash de ki Lebranda kura mash ke bashate, Lebranda kura mash ke bashote, Lebranda kura mash ke bashote, Lebranda kura mash ke bashote, kara bashote, Lebranda kura mash ke bashote, Lebranda kura mash ke bashata, Liga bashe bashe kore bash, Liba so bashe kore bashota li bashate, Liga bashe kore bash, Liba mosha kura mashota, Raba shaka bashote ki bashote. Lita kora mashe, lebranda kora masho kara mashota, lebranda kora masho ke basote, lita kora masho ka basote, ola brande kora masho kara mashota, lebranda kora masho ke basote, lito kara masho ke basota li basote, lebranda kora masho ka basote, lebranda kora masho ke basote, ola brande kora masho ke basote, lebranda kora masho ke basote. The <laughs> Lebranda, 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 Lebran
Thank you, Lord, because you poured out your spirit upon us. And every man and every woman, every boy and every girl can respond to the gospel. Thank you for giving us a message that breaks every yoke, a message that opens doors, a message that changes lives and gives eternal life. And thank you for launching us out into this global harvest. Leva <laughs> Sabranta, giving us a message that must be heard, giving us the voice and the resources to prosecute your agenda into every nation. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the message you have given to us causes people to receive Christ in the millions and in the billions. And Father, we thank you for a harvest of souls in all nations. No nation left out. Every nation. Every nation hears your voice. Every nation hears a message. Every nation produces fruit for the kingdom. Yes, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. It's been an amazing time. And you know, we are celebrating today the 200th episode of your Love World Specials with our man of God. What a season of great testimonies, of faith, of the word of God going into all this, uh, into all the earth. And now we're going to watch a video in, in prayers. In, at the end of the year 2020, the man of God told us that God was raising a new band. And we're going to be praying for ministers of the gospel. Praise the Lord. We're going to be praying for ministers of the gospel as we ought to because ministers are one group of people that are constantly under attack of distractions, of deceptions from the enemy. And as we pray for them, we cause them to stand strong in the faith and to continue in the work of the ministry. I'd like to read Colossians chapter 4 from verse 2. Colossians chapter 4 from verse 2. I'll be reading all the way to verse 4. It says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving with all praying also for us and Paul being a minister of the gospel was showing us how to pray for ministers that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds and verse 4 that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak so we're going to pray now for ministers of the gospel around the world that they are continually strengthened as they carry out the work of the ministry Filled with all boldness, courage, and faith. If you're uh, able to stand, I'd like you to go ahead and stand up. But take a position in which you can pray fervently and with focus and passion for ministers of the gospel around the world. Let us pray. Koma sheke banto riba je pranta kora mashte linta kora maja kanto kara mashto kalabasote lebranda kora mashta kiba zota riba shante kora mashata lebranda kora mashte kile basonta raba sheke basota le dariza kronta kora mashta kalabasonta raba shate ne bronta kora mashke kiba zante liba shate linta kora mashta kalabasonta raba sheke basate lebranta kora mashta kalabasonda raba Sheke basonta, oh la brada kora mashta kara basonte, liga za brate kora shenta li kosta kaba shanta, raba she brata kora mashta kala basonte riba shate, le brata kora mashta kala basonta koma shete, le branda kora mashte ke bonta kara mashte ki le basanta, le brada kora mashto kara basonta ki basate, le zakoba ze brada kora mashta kala basonta kara mashota, le brada Koba ze brante kore mashta karabashota le bari basota kora mashta karabashote ikisa kora mashta kibasota rabashike le drabali ze kunda karista kora mashta karabashota le branda kora mashta karabashota le basata le zakoba ze brade kora mashta koba sete le bari ze kora mashta kibasota rabashate le brade kosta kibasate kibari basota li 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your minister. Those that you have called and given us gift to the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord, because they are strengthened. Thank you, Lord, because they are lifted. Thank you, Lord, because they are protected. Thank you, Lord, because they walk in courage, in boldness, and in faith to declare the word of God as they ought and make manifest your glory, your truth in all the earth. Thank you, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'd like us to look again at that Colossians chapter 4 and particularly verse 3. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 3. It says, without praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. Paul was in bonds. He was imprisoned at this time because he was speaking the mystery of Christ. 
glory to God. And you know, when our man of God began to talk to us in 2020, he said, I counted the cost. I counted the cost. What, how far was I willing to go? He said, I counted the cost and I said, it's worth it. Even if it means being in prison, whatever it is, for the sake of the gospel, we must speak out. I want to read also Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 19. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 19. It says, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Verse 20. For which I am an ambassador in bonds. That means Paul was imprisoned. He was constrained. That therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We're going to be praying in tongues of the spirit. And for ministers of the gospel in line with the verses above. That they will be bold to continue to speak. No matter the persecution, no matter the threats, no matter the hindrances. And we're praying especially for those ministers who are under severe persecution and those incarcerated for their faith in Christ. Yes, there are some even today, beyond being threatened, they are actually incarcerated under threat of their very lives for preaching the gospel. We're going to pray that they are strengthened, encouraged, and delivered from the hands of unreasonable and wicked men yes let us pray now you know whenever we pray things actually happen we actually make power available right now as we pray we're going to change circumstances for some of those who are incarcerated for their faith as we pray now they are going to be testimonies they are going to be miracles they will be strengthened they will be encouraged oh go ahead and pray Liga Sabrante and delivered there will be deliverance 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 Liga Sonta Karamashate Lebranda Kora mashte, librata koba shante koma sante ribashata, librada kora mashta kiba sonda ribashate, librata koba shante koma senta la bashate, librada kora mashte kiba sonta la bashate, librata kora mashta kala basonta, raka libase ke bashe ke bando kara bashate, librada kora mashto kari bashte kiba shante kore basonta, librada kora mashte kiba shante Thank you, Lord, because you 
you told us that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic We are praying and we declare supernatural deliverance in the name of Jesus, supernatural strength in the name of Jesus for our brothers and sisters who are going through persecution and who are incarcerated for their faith. They are strengthened, they are helped, they are delivered, they are preserved in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and just give thanks to the Lord for answers to prayers. Yes, we thank God for every prayer is answered. Glory, glory, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now we've come to another special moment. We're going to be taking another look at some more reflections. It's been an eventful past three years from 2020. An explosive grandeur of a revelation of you in all the heavens and all the earth that shall never pass.
we began discussing these important truths in the Word on day one, which is day before yesterday. especially on eternal life. And, and I thought today that I would, I would uh, do a major series on eternal life sometime soon. It will help you immensely. I did touch a little bit on it during the phase uh, season three, phase five, I did. In fact, uh, I think, because I've never seen it anywhere, I think that one of the beautiful things that you would have gained also in the your Love World Specials would be uh, some kind of information in God's Word. For example, for example, I defined for you eternal life. I don't think you ever had a definition of eternal life. And, and that's the reason I had to bring it to you. Because I knew that the church had not been given a definition of eternal life. So um, the English term eternal life or sometimes everlasting life, and we try to distinguish between those two, mere semantics. But then, uh, the fact that it is the, the life that Jesus brought made it so important that we needed to know what it meant. What is eternal life? What is eternal life? What does it mean? So when the Bible says eternal life, what is it talking about? You would have to understand the scriptures to be able to define eternal life. You would have to know what the Bible says about God, about deity, divinity, Jesus Christ, idolatry. You have to know what the Bible says about all of that. And about life itself. And yet, I gave you a very simple but profound definition of eternal life. And I told you to write it down. So for those of you who have been a part of this for at least up to uh, including that period, would have it. So I told you that eternal life is the life and nature of God. Now that is very simple. But then I gave you the definition that helps it. It is the organic and existential attributes of deity. In those few words, you have the distinguishing factors. Everything that separates our God from all that may be called gods. I said it's the organic and existential attributes of deity. In other words, these attributes, 
because anyone can be called a deity. But these attributes must be organic and they must be existential. You can only find that in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As expressed in Jesus Christ. That's what makes it so beautiful because we don't see him. And so we could claim anything. We could say, oh, you know, God. We could call him God. We could, but who is he when you don't see him? And that's why many have represented God, whatever they think he is, with some stone, with some wood, with some shape. They build these massive idols, great shrines, and we see their gods with eyes that don't see. Hands they have, but the hands don't move. And even if they, even they move, they're swinging by some, whatever, some man has to make them swing. They can't do anything. Where you put them is where they remain until somebody carries them from there. What kind of gods are these? But these are the gods that many worship. The God that they have to carry. That have ears that don't hear. But when we talk about our God, you, you can't find him. You can't find him. You can't find him. So somebody can say, well, that means it doesn't exist. Because you can't find him. But then, he came to us in Jesus Christ. He came to us in Jesus Christ. And I showed you that this Jesus is himself God. Oh, hallelujah. The day you discover who Jesus is, it will change everything for you. Change everything for you. And that's why I like to talk about him. I like the whole world to know. See, he sent me to tell you. See, that's why I tell you who he is. That's why. That's why I explain to you the divinity of Jesus. So you know who he is. Let me read you two portions of the Bible. One that I read to you yesterday, and then I, I read it into another verse. You know, the, everywhere, I, wherever I look at the Bible, I see Jesus is God. Hallelujah. You can't run away from it. And why is this so important? You know, I, I'd had some arguments with certain Christians through the years. When I said Jesus is God, and they said, not quite. I said, so if he's not God, who is he? They say he's the son of God. I said, you don't understand the meaning of son of God then. They thought I was kind of uh, maybe assuming or trying to construct something for the Bible. But no. It's all about the scriptures. So let's read again yesterday what I gave to you. First John chapter 5 in verse number 20. And you, 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 you add this to all the others that I've been sharing along these lines. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. And um, I, I read to you from the uh, Living Bible. Let's read it from TLB. And we'll, right after that, we'll read from the AMPC. And we know that Christ, God's son, has come to help us understand and find the true God. And now we are in God because we are in Jesus Christ, his son. Did you, did you see that line? Now we are in God because we are in Jesus Christ. His son, who is the 
only through God. Look at that. Jesus Christ, his son, who is the only true God, and he is eternal life. Oh, blessed be God. Look at it from the Amplified Translation. And we have seen and know positively that the Son of God has actually come to this world. And has, <laughs> I like that. Has actually come to this world and has given us understanding and insights progressively to perceive, recognize, and come to know better and more clearly him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. This man is the true God and life eternal. Hallelujah. Okay. So let me take you now to 1 John chapter 1 from verse number 2. First from the King James translation. For the life was manifested and we have seen it. Listen, we just read this. He's the true God and eternal life. That Jesus Christ is the true God and eternal life. Now here he says, for the life was manifested and we have seen it. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Hi. You know, I read these scriptures and sometimes I don't know what to do with myself. For joy. You know? I'm thinking, Lord, how the world needs to know it. The whole world needs to hear this. Let me read it to you from the Living Bible. What we just saw. This one, who is life? <laughs> this one, who is life from God, has been shown to us. And we guarantee that we have seen him. I'm speaking of Christ, who is eternal life. Did you hear that? Christ is eternal life. He says, I'm speaking of Christ who is eternal life. He was with the Father and then was shown to us. Christ is eternal life. Do you get it? Here comes Jesus in the street. You're told this man is life encapsulated in a human body. It's beyond... It's beyond comprehension. You cannot comprehend this with your mentality. You can only receive this with your spirit. How, how can life, do you know what life is? How can life be encapsulated in the body? But that's what the word says. He says, the life was manifested, and we have seen it. Go to the New Living Translation. This one, who is life itself? <laughs> oh, Lord. This one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. The emphasis. Look at it. The emphasis in one verse. So much is said in one verse. You can't run away from it. Let's read it again. It says, this one who is life itself so Jesus was more than a prophet. He was more than a rabbi. He was more than a great man. The next time you think about Jesus, look beyond what all the scholars of this world have told you. Look, he says, this one who is life itself, 
Jesus Christ, life itself was revealed to us. In other words, the apostles were convinced Jesus was God. That's what, that's what, that's what he's writing about. That's what John's saying. And you read Peter says the same thing. You read Paul says the same thing. So in Christianity, a major doctrine which had been lost to so many because they weren't taught is that Jesus is God. Hear his own words. He that has seen me has seen the, has, has seen the Father. Anyone who has seen Jesus Christ has seen God. The Bible says God was in him, in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. eternal life he was with the father and then he was revealed to us Oh my goodness. He rehearsed divinity to us. So what we saw was a practice for us to see. He came, he came to show us God. He came, he came to rehearse divinity to us. The life of the kingdom. The way to live. He came to show us. No wonder the Bible says he has given us an example that we should follow his steps. You see it? Look at it in 1 Peter chapter 2 from verse 21. Let's read from verse 21. 1 Peter chapter 2. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that he should follow his steps. See? He rehearsed. 
divinity. He rehearsed righteousness. He rehearsed the God life to us. He came to live before us so we can know what God is like. If you have seen me, he said, you have seen the Father. Hallelujah. Who, who could have talked like that? Did, did anybody talk like that? Who would talk like that? When the soldiers were sent to go get him, they stood there to hear his words. They went back without him. They said, why have you come without him? And they said, no man ever spoke like this man. No man ever spoke like this man. Hallelujah. Oh, dear. Amazing. Amazing. Amazing words. Amazing words. When you read in 1st, well, let me give it to you from Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to read to you from verse 1 into verse 2, and I want you to follow this. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. We just read one, all right, where he says he's given us an example that we should follow his steps because he came to unveil God. You see, that's what he came to do. He came to rehearse God. So, he gave us an example that we should follow his steps. Now here he says, be ye therefore followers of God. The word followers means, it's, it's, it's from the Greek, mimetis. Mimetis is referring to, um, to be an imitator, to copy another. Do you see that? To copy another. Be ye therefore imitators of God. How can you imitate God when you haven't seen him? The only way you can imitate him is when you see. Yes. And that's why Jesus came yes. to rehearse God. Yes, sir. So we can see. Now you, you'd, you would notice it as I read it. Be ye therefore followers, imitators of God as dear children, beloved children. Watch, look at the next verse. And walk in love as Christ also had loved us. You see it? Christ showed us. He showed us how to love. See, we talk about God loves us, but how can you know God loves you until you see Jesus in action? Jesus in action. That was God at work. Hallelujah. And walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling servant. Amazing. Hallelujah. In, in first epistle of John, St. John, chapter 2, we're going to read from verse 5 into verse 6. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Aye. This is so beautiful. Think of this, that the love of God is perfected in you. Perfected. It, in other words, it's finalized. You have the complete love of God in your heart. You're not trying to get some of it. It's not a question of, oh God, give me more love. Mm -mm, he's not giving you more love. In you verily is the love of God perfected. Perfected. It is complete, sealed, delivered, sealed. You can love as much as you want to. It's all in you. The God love is inside you. In you, the Bible says, verily is the love of God Amen. perfected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, hereby know we that we are in him. You see it? He that said he abided in him. <laughs> oh, Lord. You know, when I study the Bible, from one scripture to the other, it's a, a, always an exciting moment. Lord, which one? Where do I even stop? It's all just so beautiful. Look at it. He that said he abided in him. If you say that you are in him, 
himself also to walk even as he walked. Ah. I'm, I'm, I have to hold myself because of this, you know, I, I have to kind of appear dignified. I would have been removing this jacket, <laughs> you know. So what? what? What's more? Do you know what he's telling you? He says, if you, if you say that you abide in Christ, you ought to walk even as you walked. Do you know what he's telling you? That you can walk like God. Because to walk as Jesus walked, you can walk as Jesus walked. In other words, you can live like Jesus. You can be like Jesus. I get it. I get it. I get it. I understand. I get it. I get it. You see, he gave us his life. We have the same life with him. We think like him. No wonder he says, you have the mind of Christ. He says, but you have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. I have the mind of Christ. And I walk even as he walked. Glory be to God. He was never intimidated. Glory be to God. He was always a success. So we ought to walk even as he walked. So on Monday when you're going to work, you know that you are Jesus in a blouse or in a gown or in a suit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because today, you are the manifestation of him. Yes, you are the expression of him. Yes. Once that dawns on your spirit, your life will take on a different meaning. You come out of religion. You know, Christianity is not a religion. Don't be deceived. Those who don't know what it is think it's a religion. No! The Bible says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. When we say salvation, salvation in Christ means that you receive eternal life into your spirit. In other words, eternal life of God is imparted to your human spirit. And suddenly, you become one with him, in fellowship with God. Same life with him. And that life supplants the human life with which you were born of your earthly parents. And right away, this eternal life begins working in you. Yeah, yeah, God's people are getting it. They're getting it. They're getting it. They're getting it. Hallelujah. And, and you know what? This is what's changing the world today. Many discovering who they are in Christ Jesus. Discovering that when they came to Christ, they didn't come to a religion. You know, years ago, I was trying to witness a, a gentleman. The moment I started, he said, I, I, I'm not interested in religion. I said, I didn't bring you religion. I didn't bring you religion. I'm not discussing religion. I'm discussing Jesus. I'm talking about a person. They don't know him. So they think it's a religion. The Christian religion. No, all religions are the same. Religion is about trying to reach out to God. Trying to look for God. Trying to discover who God is somewhere. And then you say, well, we can't find him, so we'll represent him with something. In Christianity, he came to look for us. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to seek and to save us. Even from the very beginning, he, it, wasn't Adam, it, it wasn't Adam who was saying, Adam uh, uh, and Eve saying, God, where are you? We need you. No, it was God who came. Adam, where are you? It was Adam who was hiding. It wasn't God that was lost. It was Adam who was hiding. And think about the foolishness of it, hiding from God. So he says, where are you? He says, I heard your voice. And I hid myself because I was naked. God said, who told you you're naked? Who told you? 
Did you do what I told you not to do? Yeah, I am. The lady you gave me, she, she was the one. She gave me to eat. And I did eat. And God left the matter for a moment. And said, woman, what is this that you have done? Yeah, the serpent deceived me. And God didn't have no dialogue with the serpent. He just cursed the serpent. But because he already blessed Adam, he could not curse Adam. He couldn't curse him. Because the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. He couldn't curse him. So he said, Adam, cursed is the ground for your sake. Couldn't curse him. said, because of you, because you're a blessed man and you've done this stupid thing, curse is the ground for your sake. He says, now the ground can't respond to you as it should. But in his redemptive acts, all of that got reversed. Now, all nature responds to us in Christ Jesus. Did you remember what he said? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Hallelujah. Hear ye him. All nature was commanded to hear Jesus. And Jesus said, in my name, go, exercise authority over all devils. We have authority over all demons of darkness. When we tell them to clear off, they clear off. Doesn't matter how far away, they listen, they obey. Because we are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, the righteousness of Christ gave us this eternal life. This is important. It was his righteousness. Because he fulfilled God's will. We couldn't. We couldn't please God. Adam didn't please God. Adam disobeyed God. But Jesus Christ is called the second and last Adam. And he pleased God because he functioned as a man. The Bible says being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Became obedient even unto death. The death of the cross. He humbled himself. And that righteous act of Jesus made eternal hallelujah in the way of righteousness is life and in the pathway thereof there is no death oh boy does that tell you something? You know what he's just, does that tell you? know, this is over in the Old Testament. Does that tell you something? A principle you get when you come over in the New Testament. Let, let, let me read to you again. In the way of righteousness is life. And in the pathway thereof, there is no death. Hi. This is so huge. To get it across to you, I'm going to show you a few things. Go to Romans chapter 5. Let's read from verse 18 to verse 21. Let's read. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. You see, that's the comparison I just did um, between Adam and Jesus Christ. Okay? The offense of Adam, the first, brought judgment upon all. But the righteousness of the last Adam, Jesus Christ, brought righteousness and thus justification of life. Praise God. That's wonderful. All right. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, 
shall many be made righteous. Glory be to God. Verse 20. Moreover, the law added that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. He's talking about the law of Moses and how that was brought in. Verse 21. That as sin had reigned, hey, hey, hey. Oh, I need to take like, like maybe like a month to discuss this. That as sin had reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. As sin had reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness. See why the understanding of righteousness is so important? Because grace, God's intention is for the grace of God that came in Jesus Christ to reign through righteousness. Unto, he says, eternal life by Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay. Haven't gotten this idea. Come back to what we just read. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 28, what we saw. He says, in the way of righteousness is life. You see that? So righteousness leads to life. That's what he's telling you. And so his act of righteousness brought life. Because the end of righteousness is life. You see it? He never asked you to practice righteousness for nothing. It has an end. It has a result. Now, he says, in the way of righteousness is life. And in the pathway thereof, there is no death. In the pathway thereof, there is no death. I want you to understand the the construction of this language. In the pathway thereof, there is no death. Okay, so how do you, how do you describe, that, describe that pathway? You call it what? Death-free. It's a death-free pathway. All right? A death-free pathway. There is no death in this pathway of righteousness. Okay. Now, you go to Romans chapter 8. We're going to read from verse 1 into verse 2. I want you to know this. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life. I told you about the law of life yesterday. It's called the law of life or the law of the spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, the, the, the Greek construction of what you got here is not that he delivered you from the law of sin. Okay? Like you were in sin, so he brought you out from this sin, or that he brought you out of death. You see it? That you were in death, so he, he freed you from the clutches of death. No. He's saying the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me death free. Like that pathway. He says, in the pathway thereof, there is no death. It's not like it's been freed from death. No, there is no death. This is a death-free pathway. So the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me what? Death-free. So there is no death in me. You know, God's people need to understand. Uh, Let me show you something. Let me show you something. In Romans chapter 7, let's read from verse 23. You're going to get this. But I see another law in my members. That means the members of my body, all right, my physical body. It says, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Look at verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Do you get it now? 
The human body is called a body of death. Right from when a man or woman is born, right from when you're born, you've got death in you, death in your body. Why? Because that man lived a curse of death in the world. So he's born into death. From the, we call it from the womb to the tomb. So right from the day he's born, everything is being done to stop him from dying. Because he called it, he says, in, in dying you shall die. He said, in dying you shall die. So once he's born, every effort is being made by mother and father to stop him from dying. I thought you just gave birth to this child. But you're trying to stop him from dying because the tendency is for him to die. Now, if you don't give him food, he's going to die. If you don't give him drink, he's going to die. Right from the, after he's born, you're doing every effort to keep him alive. Otherwise, he's going to die. So he's in the body of death. From when he's born. Oh, wretched man that I am, he says, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Then he goes, look at the next verse. He says, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Why? Because he is the one who brought the solution. That's what he just told you. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me debt free. Hallelujah. Debt free. There is no death in me. Sobra kira alagastos. Prandolo gronde glirahastes. You see, God's people have to learn the language of the kingdom. He had said, so that you may boldly say. If you don't say it, you believe in the life of the ordinary man. You believe in the life of this world. You be functioning from a dead, doomed body. But he said, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also vitalize your mortal body by his spirit that lives in you. Once the Holy Ghost has vitalized your mortal body, it's no longer death doomed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the generation of the church that catches this is the generation of the rapture. That's why the church has to get it. Because, listen, remember, the Bible says, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. The rapture is not going to happen just like, gosh, and we say, oh, he's taking us, oh, I didn't know we're going. Oh, it's the, oh, today's the day. No, a thousand times, no. It's going to be by faith. He says, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Before his translation, he had the testimony that he pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's important. So we're going to walk in this world with such faith, with such understanding, that each one of us begin to say, the day is close. The day is close. We're going soon. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, who shall deliver me from this body of death? It's a body of death. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me debt free, sin free. He said, sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. He says, in the pathway thereof, there is no death. In the pathway thereof, this way that I live, in my pathway there is no death. And the light of the world. I'm not a victim of a victim of the wicked. No, I'm not. Kila Mahatse. 
So you declare, in my pathway, there is no death. Ay, 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 ay. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me dead free. Sin free. I walk in righteousness. Eternal life is at work in me. I have the life of God in me. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. He said, I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. Preserved blameless. Ah, yeah, yeah. Look at Jesus. The Bible says, the Bible says of him, full of grace and truth. Full of grace. And of his fullness have all we received. Grace for grace. Shout amen, somebody. He says we have received of his fullness. Go to St. John's Gospel. Let's take it from, from 14 into 16. Chapter 1. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. Aye. Full of truth. Can you think about someone that's full of truth. Full of reality. What was Jesus like? Here's the description. Full of grace and truth. Children ran to him. Sinners ran to him. They ran away from him. They ran to him. The sick came to him. The weak and the hungry came to him. What was Jesus like? Full of grace and truth. Oh. Next verse. John bore witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. 16. And of his fullness have all we received in grace upon grace. It says grace heaped upon grace. Grace heaped upon grace. Read from the Amplified Translation. For out of his fullness, abundance, we have all received, all had a share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another, and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, and even favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. <laughs> he's, he's breaking down the meaning of the word grace there, so you understand what he's talking about. Grace heaped upon grace, favor upon favor. Look at your life. Now that you're in Christ Jesus, your life must exude Favor upon favor, grace upon grace. So every day of your life, you say, I'm full of grace today. From grace to grace, from grace to grace. I'm walking in a greater grace today than I did yesterday, than I did last year, than I did last month. A greater grace today. Grace is working in me. Grace heaped upon grace. Hallelujah full of grace of his fullness i have received abundant grace before the father i am full of grace i have grace before god i have grace before men i have grace everywhere who oh, glory to god i'm full of favor sarah goes have you seen some people they got so much problem. They say, everywhere I go, people just dislike me. I don't know why. Everywhere I go, every job I've had in the last three years, they just make trouble for me and they kick me out. My brother, my sister, I know that there are such problems, but you know what? It's time to change it. Amen. Do what I'm telling you now. Change it. Change it now. And declaring the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, of his fullness I have received grace heaped upon grace. My life is full of grace. I want to show you the Christian life, this is what it is unending grace. Unending grace. 
every day of your life, there's more than enough grace for you today. How could you have lived without this? How did, how did you manage without this? How did you manage? How did you manage without this? Now begin a new journey of absolute success. Some of you have struggled too much. You've worked too hard and too, you've, you've struggled too much. You struggled so much to take care of your home. You struggled so much to take care of your spouse or your children. You struggled so much until the weight of the load you're carrying is like, oh, Lord, I'm carrying so much. Oh, God, look at what I'm doing. I'm carrying so much. Why are you? Ah, he says, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come on, shout amen, somebody. If you're doing it for the Lord, then his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Ah, Coralia, Fasco Jos Lamande. Ah. What a life has given us. Stop carrying the Lord, casting your cares upon him, for he cares for you. He cares. Can you trust him? Begin today to trust him. Then the next thing, then the next thing, another beautiful one, Romans chapter 1 and verse number 16 into 17. You're going to love this one. My life. Oh, boy. Look at it. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Look at the next verse. For therein, therein in the gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. My life is from faith to faith. You see, if you're walking in this righteousness, then your life is from faith to faith. See, the more we talk about the righteousness of God, the more our faith grows. Look what has just happened with you, even in the last few minutes that I discussed the righteousness of God. See how your faith went up. Your faith soared. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As this written, the just shall live by faith. Can you see that? His righteous ones shall live by faith. That's the only way you can live in this kingdom. To live in Christ is from faith to faith. And that means you got to know the righteousness of God. In this gospel, it's revealed to you the righteousness of God from faith to faith. My life is from faith to faith. I don't have doubts. I don't have fears. I walk in faith. Did you see it? For we walk by faith, not by sight. 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 I walk by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah. So they say, well, uh, Pastor Chris, you think that's going to happen? It doesn't look like it. It doesn't matter how it looks. I walk by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. I walk by faith, not by sight. Doesn't matter how it looks. Doesn't matter how it feels. I walk by faith, not by sight. Lebra so carabahande le greske, li carabahanda la bronda la gabahaya. I'm a success. I walk by faith, not by sight. Glory to God. I am victorious. I walk by faith, not by sight. I am prosperous. I walk by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah! Then come to this next one. Oh boy, this is big. Second Corinthians chapter 3. And we are reading from verse 18. But we all, <laughs> with open face, beholding as in a glass, that's a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are changed, metamorphosed, into the same image. Hey, 
as we behold the glory of God in a mirror, God's mirror. The word of God is God's mirror, the Bible says. So the more I read the word of God, the more I see the glory of God. And it tells me that the word is a mirror reflecting the glory of God. He just told me by that, that I am called the glory of God. Because he calls my reflection the glory of God. If my reflection is the glory of God, I am the glory of God. Oh, I get it now. I see the life that Christ has given me. I am the glory of God. My life is set for the glory of God. So every day that I live in this world, I live to the glory of God. Ay, 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 ay. I live to the glory of God. Now look at it. Look at what he says. He says, we are with open face, beholding as in the glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, into the image of what I saw, that reflection. Because he says, if I look at me, it don't look like the glory of God. But I look at the mirror, I see the glory of God. I said, but that's my reflection. So I look at me. No, so stop looking this way. Look that way. He says, because as long as you are looking at the mirror and looking at that reflection, he says, there's a, a metamorphosis. There's a transfiguration from glory to glory. The more I look, the more I'm transfigured. The more I look, the more I'm transfigured from glory to glory. So I get it now. My life was designed by God to be from glory to glory. You see it? You have some people who say, well, you know, last year was better in business. This year has been terrible. Last year was so wonderful, but this year, they, they, they always have this something about how things went down in their lives. You know, it's like, like we've been struggling. Say, how are you, brother? I say, well, we're struggling. They were struggling. They're struggling. No, I never struggle. No, 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 a thousand times, no. No, 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 we don't struggle. We, we, we are royalty. Don't you get it? We're royalty. We don't struggle. Don't say we are struggling. Our luta continua. No, 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 no. Not for us. Say, grado la branga, dila das queixes. My glorious life is on. <laughs> My glorious life is on. And it's from glory to glory. My glorious life is on. So you start telling them, My glorious life is on, brother. Yay. So, hello, how are you? My glorious life is on. It's on. Ha, ha, ha. Glory to God. From glory to glory, what a life is given us. What a life is given us. From glory to glory, give him praise. Thank him. Thank him for his love. Your glorious life is on. Is on. Is on. Is on. Your glorious life is on. Hallelujah. He says, glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. Glorious things are spoken of thee. Hallelujah. Thank him. Thank him. Glorify his name. Glorify his name. There's none like him. Oh, thank you, Lord. Unending grace. Unending faith. Unending glory. What a glorious life. No failure. Uh-uh. No failure. No failure. Excellence all the way.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, while we're rounding this up, I want to show you just some beautiful testimonies from the healing streams that we had a couple of weeks ago. We have so many testimonies. I just have to show some to you. There's so many. How could we, how could we enjoy all these testimonies without you? I want you to watch this and see, to consider where we are today in the world. And to know that the word of God that brought us this far will take us all the way. See? Because the word is unfailing. How many more episodes are we going to have? Only God knows. After all, we didn't plan this 200. Only God knows. But he's shown himself strong in us, through us, and in our behalf. And one resounding thought in these programs is that all the nations belong to God. All of us are the works of his hands. And he is the God of heaven and earth. During this period, we sang a special song. We had a, an anthem that we sang again and again. God of heaven and earth. And we had it in different languages, many languages of the world. We're going to sing it now. A beautiful reminder of the victories that he gave us with these amazing programs that brought us courage, hope, faith, peace. Let's sing it to his praise and glory. Follow the lines, follow, follow the text we'll put on the screen for you. Sing it with us.
to God we sang that song many many times and we are still singing it we're still singing it if you've not been born again this is your moment to receive salvation I want to lead you into salvation the Bible way right now say these words after me and mean them from the bottom of your heart and God will hear you say oh Lord God I believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God I believe he died on the cross to save my soul I believe God raised him from the dead and he's alive today. I confess with my mouth. Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. From this day. I receive by faith. Eternal life into my heart. Thank you Lord. For saving my soul. I have eternal life now. I am born again. I'm a child of God from this day. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. If you pray that prayer, I want you to know that God heard you and that he answered you. And according to the Bible, salvation is yours now. You are saved. You belong in his kingdom now. It's just that simple. That's the way he designed it. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for everyone who pray that prayer. Let the name of the Lord Jesus be named upon them. Satan has no claims over them anymore. They belong in your kingdom now. I bless them with your word. I bless them with your love, with your grace. I bless them with the Holy Ghost in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. We have a book we'd like to give to you. It's titled, Now That You Are Born Again. It's a small book. You can read it real quickly. And it's pretty simple. It tells you more about this life that you just received. And you can start learning that and begin building your faith strong in Jesus Christ. Use the code number at the bottom of your screen to download a copy of the book for yourself. Make sure to do it today. The website address is right there. It has the same name as the book. Now that you are born again .org. Can't easily forget that. So do it today. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. Now, we have a very important program coming up Wednesday, the 13th of September, 
to Sunday, the 17th of September. It's called Rapaton. And it's about our evangelical work to the ends of the earth through rhapsody of realities in different formats through different platforms in many ways and of course all languages of the world and so this program is coming up during that week Wednesday to Sunday from 13th of September to 17th of September 